Let's uh, pay attention about what we're doing today. Let's get started. Okay, so the goal of the Today Lab is uh, we have multiple goals. The first thing that we are going to prepare is uh, a standardized solution of oxalic acid. Standardized means that we are making from scratch the oxalic acid solution and we know exactly what is the concentration of the oxalic solution. Oxalic acid is a diprotic acid that has, uh, as we very well know, this formula. Okay? It was in the quiz. Determine the concentration. Then the second step is uh, we use the standardized oxalic acid to determine the concentration of a solution of sodium hydroxide. And then finally, I will distribute unknowns for which you will determine the molar mass. Uh, and the unknowns can be mono, di, or tri protic acid acids. So mono means H A, di means two protons that can be titrated, triprotic is three protons that can be titrated. Okay, I can just call it all with A. So that's what mono di and triprotic means. How do we operate? So in the first part of the lab, which is the longest part. Each of you is going to use the weight boats. These are here, and they are located under the hood to weight the oxalic acid that is also in the hood. And uh, you're going to weight approximately, it doesn't have to be exactly, 3.2 grams of oxalic acid, and you're going to use uh, the analytical balance. So record all the significant figures. So report the mass to the correct number of sig feet. How many decimal do we have? How many numbers, significant figures do we have after the decimal point in uh, analytical balances? Four, correct. Okay? Five including the one before the, the, the decimal point. So the total number of sig fig is going to be five, four after the decimal, okay? Then we, you're going to transfer the acid in using an Erdermeyer flask and uh, and uh, a 250 milliliter um, volumetric flask, you're going to transfer all the oxalic acid in the in the big in the um, in the volumetric flask. The way you're going to do this is also using the ionized water. So what you're going to do is uh, when, to make sure that all the oxalic acid that you weighted goes in here, you're going to rinse with the ionized water that, and the boat and the uh, funnel. Make sure that before you do this, uh, you rinse the uh, volumetric flask first with water, then with the ionized water a lot, because you don't know what other people did in the past with this uh, flask. Once uh, you have added the acid to the flask, you fill the volumetric flask with the water, the ionized water, to about 
one quarter, three quarters, maximum up to here. And then you start to shake it so that you dissolve that acid completely. It takes a while to dissolve the acid. Once you have finished to dissolve the acid, you add water to the mark. So you align your eye to the mark of the volumetric flask and you add the water so that the meniscus is touching the line of the mark. Your eyes has to be aligned to the mark, so you don't see two lines, you see only one line. If you see two lines, you are too high or too low compared to the mark, your eye is. Okay? Once, uh, uh, how do you add the last few drops of water here? Using a plastic pipette that I'm going to provide, okay? And you've seen them before. Let me see if I have any in here. These are the plastic pipettes that you guys are going to use to reach the meniscus. If you go with the water above the meniscus, you have to restart again to prepare your solution. So be careful, be patient. Once you add the water to the meniscus, you close again, you cup again your flask, and you homogenize. You make your solution homogeneous so that the concentration is throughout the flask the same. Okay, so this is our acid, and we put it aside. Then, we have in the hood, I didn't take it out because it's concentrated, six molar sodium hydroxide, you take uh, approximately 12.5 to 30 milliliters, not more than that, of sodium hydroxide, and you put it in an Erlenmeyer flask, 500 milliliters, per, so this is 250, double the size. And then you add, um, of course, uh, all the glassware has to be washed, with water and rinse with the ionized water first. You don't need to dry the glassware ever, okay? So you add with a, um, uh, you add the, uh, with a graduate cylinder, you take a graduate cylinder uh, to measure the sodium hydroxide, the 12.5 or 30 milliliters, okay? You pour it in a uh, earlier by your flask that has been washed and rinsed with the ionized water and then you reach the mark of 500 milliliters okay so 500 milliliters obviously this solution has been diluted so we need to find out what is the exact concentration of this solution and uh, We'll talk about uh, the calculation later, okay? So what you're going to do is uh, you prepare the solution, you mix the solution, then you clean a burette. Right here we have our burette. First with the uh, with water, then the ionized water, then, and let me show you how to do it. You're going to condition the burette so clean top and bottom, and then condition your burette with sodium hydroxide. Let's assume that this was my sodium hydroxide solution. So you add about five, 10 milliliters, whatever you want. And then let's assume that this is my waste. You go like this. Now first, you clean the tip of your burette, okay? And then you condition your burette, turning around your solution and making sure that your solution gets 
all over the walls of the burette. Why do we do this? So that we don't dilute the sodium hydroxide when we add it to the burette, because we want to find out exactly what is the molarity of the sodium hydroxide. Okay. So we then fill the burette to the marker 0, 0.00. This is the type of reading that we need to do, plus minus 0 0.01. So two significant figures after the decimal point. Um, we, we fill the burette all the way to the top. And we have stools all over the lab, like this one. For those people that like me, need to stand up because again the meniscus has to touch the zero line okay the next thing that we do is we clean with water a uh, flask earlier my flask day is a 250 milliliter and then we uh, add 25 milliliter with a volumetric pipette of the acid. So I suggest you, this is still water, to practice with water. You have to rinse it anyway, clean it with, uh, uh, with the ionized water. So the way it works, the pipette is uh, you squeeze very well the bulb, you put your solution, uh, your pipette into the water solution and you start to collect your 25 milliliters. You keep your hand very close to the tip of your 25 milliliters so that when all the air has gone inside the bulb you can squeeze it again without losing the liquid and start again to collect your solution. What you want to do when you collect your 25 milliliters of oxalic acid is to get a little bit above the mark. So you stay here, you add a little bit more, I am above the mark, and I stop. Then, slowly, with my finger, I let the air come in, I line my eyes to the mark, the mark is right here, so that now I have my meniscus exactly aligned, now it's a little bit lower, to my, to my, um, so here's the meniscus, and I let the liquid go out slowly, releasing the pressure on my finger so that my meniscus is about, it gets exactly 25. Once it gets exactly 25, I pour it into the flask they are going to use for the titration. To expedite the process of pouring, the way you push the air out, you can push air in. And also this not only expedite the process of empty the pipette, but also you collect everything that is inside the pipette. So squeeze it until nothing is here. You want to have exactly 25 milliliters. And you prepare three solutions like this. You add an indicator, the phenolphthalein indicator, and perform the titration. So here's my indicator. Let's fake that this is my sodium hydroxide solution. Every time I'm titrating, what I want to do, does anyone have another wash bottle filled with? Uh, okay. Every time that I am, every time I'm titrating, you see that the when the sodium hydroxide uh, fall, uh, is added in my fall on the walls of my solution. So I clean the walls of my solution constantly with the ionized water. Because we know that the moles of oxalic acid 
that we added are always the same, okay? So I perform the titration until my solution, oops, becomes pink. Now, when the solution becomes pink, I reach the end point of my titration. But this pink is too strong. It means that we went like one drop or half drop above the equivalence point for the titration. And so what we want to do is, we want to make sure that the pink is as faint as possible. The pink color should be like five shades lighter than this. It should be the same color or rubbing alcohol, if you ever seen the color. It's a very, very light pink. The lighter is the pink, the more accurate is your end point. The closer is the end point to the equivalent point, okay? Every semester, I have a competition in my class. Those of you who will get the pinkest solution, the lightest pink solution, sorry, not the pinkest, the lightest pink solution, will get extra credit for this part. We have two portion extra credit. Okay, once we do at least three titration, okay, you have to do a minimum three or as many as you need to reach precise volume. So the volume had to be close to in, in value to each other. That means that your titration was pretty precise because you have repeatability, right? So once you perform your titration, so here I wrote four times. The very first titration is uh, called the dirty titration. You cannot go fast to figure out where is your equivalence point or your end point, I should say better, of your titration. Then the other three are going to be fast at the beginning for the last one or two milliliters. You go very slowly so that you reach as more accurately as possible the end point of the titration. In part two, I will provide you with an unknown acid. And uh, in the unknown acid, uh, let me get it, one second. In part two of the experiment, I'm going to provide you with unknown acids. And you have a several information in each vial of your acid. You have the name of the, the number of the unknown that you need to record in your notebook. And in here, you have the N equal to 1 is telling you that it's monoprotic. If N is equal to 2, is diprotic. If N is equal to 3, is a triprotic. So here, for example, I have an N equal to 2, is a diprotic acid. And the, the vial is telling you how much acid you need to weight again in the boat, in the analytical balance. So for example, for this acid, you need to uh, weight uh, 0.75 grams approximately. It doesn't have to be exact. In and uh, in this one, n equal to two, you need to use a 0.25, so less. So you prepare again three flasks of 250 milliliter of acid, okay? And you perform the titration at least in triplicates, okay? or until you obtain precise data. So you might, you might need to do five titration. The first one is going to be always your dirty one, the one that you do faster to figure out approximately what is the end point of your titration. The rest you're going to do slowly 
you had to have a three precise attrition in which the volume are very close to each other. Um, you're going to dissolve the acid in 250 milliliter of uh, in a 250 milliliter Lermeyer flask, so the same size, and you're going to add about 50 milliliter water. It doesn't matter how much water exactly you add, because what counts is the weight of the acid, because the number of moles of the acid are going to be constant. Okay. You add the indicator, as always. Don't forget to add the indicator, otherwise you can consume all your sodium hydroxide and the solution doesn't turn pink. So don't forget to add the indicator, which is in that food, and perform the titration. Okay, so now, do you guys have any question? You need to record the value of the mass that you're measuring of the oxalic acid and the unknown to the correct number six fig in your notebook. You need to record the volume, you have to prepare the table for the titration in part A, part one, and part two. So know how much volume you're adding for each titration, okay? For each titration, you're going to have the, the mass of the unknown and the volume corresponding of sodium hydroxide. So in part one, eventually you're going to calculate, this is a calculation that you can go do at home, you're going to determine what is the molarity based on the average volume of the three titration, okay, of uh, sodium hydroxide. So you know what is the concentration you know what is the concentration? Let's do now a little bit of calculation. And let's write it here where we have uh, the goal. Because uh, the goal, I think, is pretty clear at this point, right? So let's do this here. Let's figure out how we're going to do the calculations that you're performing at home. So the reaction is taking place is the following. The oxalic acid is a diprotic acid because these two protons react with two moles of sodium hydroxide. They're both aqueous. And this is an acid-based reaction in which we form a salt plus two molecules of water, okay? Now, we know what is the mass of the acid. We go to the moles of the acid. We go to the moles of the sodium hydroxide. And using the volume of a sodium hydroxide that we using in the three titrations, so V1 plus V2 plus V3 divided by three, we find out the molarity of the sodium hydroxide. Okay? So we are performing three very precise titrations. We figure out what is the average volume average volume of the sodium hydroxide and then we determine the average molarity of the sodium hydroxide, okay? In the second part, what is happening is that we have an acid that is unknown. Let's say there's a monoprotic acid. And we are going to use the same sodium hydroxide to titrate the acid. We know what is the, to obtain the salt, NaA, plus water. So this is liquid, this is aqueous, aqueous, and we dissolve this in water, so it's aqueous, right? 
this is liquid, and this is aqueous. So what is happening here is uh, we are start we want to determine the molar mass of this acid. We know the moles. Let me erase this part here. We know that moles are equal to mass of the unknown acid over the molar mass. So in order to figure out what is the molar mass of the acid, I had to divide the mass that I did weight for each of the three acids by the moles of the acid. How do I find the moles of the acid? I start from the molarity of the sodium hydroxide. I use the volume, the average volume for the three titration of the sodium hydroxide. Actually, the volume for each titration of the sodium hydroxide, then I get the moles of the sodium hydroxide, then I use the mole ratio to calculate the moles of the acid, and then I use these moles in here to figure out the molar mass of the acid. I repeat this three times for titration 1, titration 2, and titration 3, and then I calculate the average molar mass. Also in the second part of the procedure, you're going to gain extra points if you're going to have a very faint peak. Okay? So, twice the possibility to collect extra credit in first part one and part two. This is it, let's get started to work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure approximately 3.2 grams of the oxalic acid. So using the analytical balance, we're gonna turn it on. Then we're gonna place our weighing boat inside. Tear it. Okay. Using the scapula, we're going to add our oxalic acid. Record to the correct number of significant figures, the mass of the oxalic acid. We're going to be making the oxalic acid solution. So using this clean and clean uh, volumetric flask, we're going to place our funnel. Once the solution is completely dissolved, we add the water to the meniscus, first with the wash bottle, and then for the last few drops to reach the meniscus with the pipette, the plastic pipette. At this point, when it's close to the meniscus or to the line, uh, we're going to use a pipette to get it really there. So you want to keep it at eye level.
We're gonna add deionized water until the 500 milliliter mark. So. so after adding parafilm, we're gonna swirl it. After conditioning our burette with the sodium hydroxide solution, we're going to add, uh, we're going to fill up the burette until the 0, 0.00 milliliter mark uh, using a funnel. And then to get it as accurate as possible, we went a little bit above. And then we're going to place some and stop. Now it's at exactly, exactly 25 according to the pipette. And then we're just gonna place it in here. So uh, after adding the 25 milliliters of oxalic acid and 25 milliliters of the deionized water, we're gonna add one drop of the phenolphthalein indicator into the Erlenmeyer flask. Place the Erlenmeyer flask under the burette. We're going to lower it so the tip is inside the Erlenmeyer flask. And then using the knob, we're going to be adding the hydroxide solution. And all the while, we're going to be swishing it. And we're going to continue this until the solution turns faint which indicates that it's reached an uh, equivalence point and the reading will be the end point. Okay. And every so often we're going to add deionized water along the walls to get any of the uh, solution Now that the solution's turned pink, we're going to read the final reading on the burette. This is the final reading of the burette for trial two. 
after adding a uh, sodium hydroxide solution to the oxalic, uh, oxalic, oxalic acid solution. When you're adding the sodium hydroxide, you're going to stir with one hand the solution and add with the other hand the sodium hydroxide as this. So that when you reach the end point, you can stop the titration immediately. When you see that the pink becomes persistent, you're very close to the equivalence point, actually to the end point of your titration. So one hand on the flask and the other end on the stopper of the burette. When the solution becomes pink, keep stirring. And uh, if, uh, this is too pink, it should be a fa more faded pink. So when you're seeing the persistency of the color, instead of adding the uh, solution from the burette, use the bottle to wash the solution to collect your to clean the walls of the flask and to collect the one drop that is attached to the tip. So here is too pink. You need to go a little dark lighter. But this is a good titration still. Okay, so record the values and then you're done with the first three titrations. Hold it. Yeah. This is the unknown uh, solid acid, and it's unknown number 18. N is equal to 2. And we're supposed to be putting each sample should contain around 0.25 grams. And then record to the number of significant figures. This for our sample one. This is the this is the mass for sample two. So record to the appropriate amount of significant figures. This is the mass of the unknown solid acid for sample number three. So record to the correct number of significant figures. This is the weight of the unknown solid acid for sample number four. So record to the appropriate number of significant figures. With the measured uh, unknown acid, we're going to place it into our Erlenmeyer flask and then using the deionized water squirt bottle, we're going to make sure that all of it, that there's no more remaining on the weight boat. Then we add roughly 50 milliliters of deionized water to the flask. And swirl it. And continue to mix it until the solid has completely dissolved. And we're going to repeat this process for the next three samples. After the solid acid has been thoroughly dissolved, we're going to add one drop of the phenolphthalein um, indicator. Which we filled with, uh, which we filled with the sodium hydroxide solution from the prior lab. We're going to use this to titrate our unknown uh, acid solution. So first, okay. we're going to place it. 
pressing the knob, the turn, the turning knob, we're going to add the sodium hydroxide solution and spin it at the same time. going to rinse the sides with deionized water and the tip of the burette to get any um, stray solution. number of significant figures for sample one. Okay, this is the final bureau reading for trial two, so read to the correct number of significant figures. This is the final burette reading for sample three after titrating the oxalic the after titrating the acid. So record to the appropriate number of significant figures. the final burette reading for sample 4, so record to the appropriate number of significant figures.